Hi, everyone. My name is Ben, and today I'm going to be talking about how to efficiently use the dial in Advantage. <laughs> One of the most drastic changes for Schultz coming over from Smash 4 is the art palette, or the dial. Before, you'd have to manually cycle arts and then wait for the art to lock. This was very slow, and it was common for your opponent to be out of disadvantage by the time you actually changed into Smash or Buster, which meant that you had to play a lot more neutral with your risky arts. And arts will activate after 46 frames after the last special input. By focusing on efficiently swapping arts during transitions, you're able to avoid one of the biggest downsides of the character, which is risking his arts negative stats in neutral. This is the Minato power! The easiest way to switch arts quickly is to change while you're traveling in the air to your opponent. If you have to spend time drifting to them anyway, doesn't it make sense to change arts while you're waiting? This idea drives most of the thought processes that you'll see in this video. First, we'll talk about the inputs. There's two kinds of ways Shulk can jump and dial, with the full hop and with short hop. With the full hop method is easy. You just hold B and jump, and Shulk will jump and open the dial. This method works great, but might send you too high if there's a platform in the way or if your opponent is short. The second way is with a short hop. In my experience, it's very hard to actually time the short hop by hand because you cannot use the short hop macro with the special button. As you can see, when I try to press short hop and B at the same time, even if I just hold down both buttons, the macro doesn't happen. The full hop happens whether you like it or not, and it's because special moves don't behave with the short hop macro like the A button does. I prefer to use two jump buttons and special to force a short hop. That way I don't have to worry about holding the buttons too long, which helps me with my consistency. This is very easy with a pro controller because you have two face buttons set to jump by default. In fact, I use my thumb to press both of them at the same time. This is me pressing X and Y with my thumb, holding it down completely. But with a GameCube controller, you might have to settle for the full hop version because there's not really an easy way to map two jump buttons and special at the same time. The controller is just not designed for it. Next, let's talk about the applications. As you can see, even without dial storage, Shulk can easily full hop, change arts, and then land with an aerial of his choice. This is great if you want to quickly change to Buster to do a combo with his Nair, or if you want to turn on Smash Art to kill your opponent. It's also excellent for going off stage to get an early kill. Look how much faster Shulk can swing when you change arts and move at the same time. The difference is tremendous. There are some limitations. For one, you cannot shore hop with this method at all. Look, Shulk will land before his aerials come, and that's no good. Speed art is even worse because of the low jump height and the gravity. At the start of the match, you can drop from the platform, input a forward air, and then hold special, jump, and A to buffer a short hop nair afterwards. If you look closely when I do this, you'll notice that Shulk actually gets the yellow light that normally happens when you dial charge. This is me holding jump A and B at the same time. Since I'm buffering a short hop nair but also holding B, this fully charges the dial and then I do this aerial afterwards so that I'm not stuck here in place doing a move afterwards. This makes it very safe. You do an aerial, you do a second aerial, boom, door, dial storage. It's very easy. You can also land with a fair, and while holding special, do a down tilt. This gives you an easy way to charge also, while also putting out a hitbox that protects yourself. I don't recommend doing the jab version. Jab doesn't have a good hitbox and doesn't really do anything to protect you, even though it's faster. Also useful is ghetto charging. Just turn on an art and hold B. Don't hold it for so long that the dial opens, just so that you can see some yellow light. If you're doing that, you know it's working. This method is great if you're in a hurry, but it might slow down your attack in the future, so it's always better to just use max dial charging techniques if you have the time. Using dial storage, Shulk can jump and dial arts instantly without having to wait for the dial to open. Not only does this mean you can hit them up to 10 frames faster, it also means Shulk can use fast falls and short hops without worrying about whether his attacks will come out in time. This technique is a requirement for you to do some of these applications. Saving time with dial storage means that Shulk can true punish some moves out of shield and change arts at the same time. Smash! 
This can really let you rack up some damage quickly when someone overextends. You can also choose to retreat safely, pressuring your opponent and changing arts at the same time. Sometimes you'll have an opportunity to punish somebody, but in shield art, the damage penalty makes it so that even if you get a punish, you might not really get a whole lot. Another major benefit is being able to get strong punishes when you're in shield art. Speed art's neutral actually benefits a great deal from speed dial. One of the major uses is actually using the iframes to speed through projectiles and closing the gap, and then you switch from speed to your punishment art. This lets you use speed to play neutral, but still have smash or buster for your punish game. Like this. With speed dial, you have enough time to get out an aerial before you land on a standard platform, which can make for some interesting pressure and punishment against tall characters. To finish my video, I'd like to talk about a few more general use applications for this technology so you have some ideas on how to implement it. First, Shulk can use this in advantage as an unreactable mix-up. Your opponent will very clearly see if you sure hop and switch to smash, but they have no idea if you're going to dial smash and swing, or if you're going to jump out there, dial smash and do nothing. It's, it's impossible to tell the difference between the two, but the smash change is super telegraphed, and this can kind of force your opponent to commit to a defensive option before they want to because they don't want to get hit. This can also be used to call out people who you think are trying to be stingy with some of their recovery options. If you think that they're not going to swing, you can just go out there and kill them. And because you have this ability to change to smash art instantly, it's possible. Second, you can use this as an extreme burst option in order to kill someone who's overextended. Speed art by itself isn't that threatening at 85, but when you combine it with this dial option, I'm able to get into a position to kill someone incredibly effectively. There are a lot of applications for this concept. At its core, it's just a movement technique. Moving while dialing is a fundamental aspect of playing golf. Please try out some of these ideas and see if you can invent your own style on top of them.